Well, each month of the year going forward, I'm going to focus on what you should be doing in the whitetail woods for improving your hunt, for improving your habitat, your herd, and really ultimately building up to that hunt uh, this fall. And, and right now we're approaching May. And so in May, there's a few things that I consistently do and that I've consistently accomplished throughout the years during the month of May. And, and I'll, I'll start, uh, May is officially whitetail waterhole month in my book anyways, and there's a few reasons for that. In early April, we're getting a lot of frozen ground. There's still snow out in the woods right now. Sometimes you have a hard time digging in these tanks. May is a great time to still capture some spring rains and get your water holes full and uh, to collect water and then also get those installed. And then make sure that there's, if there's any aversion to a big open hole with a bunch of so soil around it, that you can actually put these water holes in and hide them we a lot of times plant some grasses and clover around them so we avoid e any kind of mud uh, for EHD. But it's a great time to get them established. Get them established when um, the deer are going to be fully used to that area and that water hole and actually form a pattern of use throughout the summertime on that water hole as it goes into the fall. Now a few uh, quick tips of water hole. You can see our, our critter stick here. So the nice squirrel or rodent that falls into that can get out. You can see it's very full now, it'd be pretty easy for them to get out. But um, that's very important. We've had some uh, rotten water holes because something went in there. And that's why you don't put fish in them to clean up algae. You don't need to clean up the algae in the first place, but to come back and have some rot rotting fish in there that died because they didn't have enough oxygen or for whatever reason, then um, you don't want critters in your water hole except for the deer that are drinking out of them or whatever other critters drinking out of them. You want them to get out of the water hole when they're done drinking and taking a drink. I prefer at least a 100 gallon water hole. Just trust me on this one. We've had rain heavy the last three years and I have people all the time and say, well, we have a 40 gallon water hole that's been full. Wait till a normal year. These have been wet years. You need at least 100 to 110 gallons. Uh, we haven't had to fill our water hole since 2016. That's not necessarily a good thing. We've lost a few homes in our local town here in Coon Valley due to flooding. And so that's not necessarily a good thing. I'm looking at this is about a three foot by four foot tank. It's 30 inches deep. Let's say we took this same 110 gallon tank. This is a 110 gallon one from TSC. It's only $75. So very affordable. We've never had them crack. We've been using them for 12 years somewhere around there. Never had these crack or break or fail in any way. A swimming pool you will. Something cheap, something small, pond liner. Some of those just don't work. They break. We've used them. I've seen them hundreds of water holes, if not thousands, on client property. So this is kind of a collection of what I've learned, what I've used. I started using tank water holes in the mid-2000s when no one else was talking about them. It's something we, we started using split 55-gallon drums, plastic. They just weren't large enough, 27 and a half gallons. Let's say you had a big pool or a wider water hole that was 15 inches deep, 20 inches deep. So you had more surface area for the same amount of gallons then you get a lot of evaporation. So the water that you do collect dries up quickly because there's more surface area. More surface area means more evaporation. And so in a hot summer or a hot October, late September, you're gonna lose a lot of water per day. And so I like this depth, 30 inches right here. This ends up approximately three feet by four feet, 30 inches deep, and that's 110 gallons. Now, there's another size out there, it's about 150 gallons. Again, more surface area, but it's still 30 inches deep. When you have that depth, if this was any deeper for the same size, it'd be too deep, if that makes sense. There's a balance in there where deer can still stick their head in there and they can take a drink, they can use them. And then I like digging these below ground level so you actually capture water and it doesn't stick out. In a fantasy land state where there's not as much hunting pressure and deer used to, you can get away with a lot more um, in those areas and not spook deer. Um, might even be a black bear thing. We've had black bears out here, but when these are sticking up above, we notice an aversion to the local deer herd, especially the ones that are coming through, especially those mature bucks that have lived on someone else's land all summer. They're gonna take residence in your land during the fall, and they see this big black thing sitting there that sticks out. I don't think they like it. We found they don't like it. We've seen them going around it. We've seen deer blow at them. Putting it down here early in May, it becomes part of the ground, looks like a puddle. And you can see this, it's very non-obtrusive. Deer can actually drink from all sides around this. They can get to it very easy. We don't have a big brush pile right here against it. They don't like that either and feeling hidden. And I want to talk about something really quick with these water holes. You know, size is really important. Just go by my experience out there. Um, you shouldn't have to spend more than 75 bucks for one of these. It's uh, 100 bucks, 125 for a 150 gallon tank. 
a lot of digging. If you can get a hold of a skid steer or something, we've done, we put a lot of these in with a shovel and they are very difficult. The really cool thing about water holes, there's a question eight on the Wisconsin uh, um, deer survey that they had in middle of April was about container water holes and should they be outlawed. Well, you know what, folks? I think the biologist should be making that decision, not the general ill-informed public. But I will tell you something about water holes and tank water holes compared to a natural water hole or a man-made dug water hole. If they have mud and receding water around that water, that's what actually builds and offers the environment for the EHD to propagate within that drying and cracked mud in the late summer and that's why there's EHD because of that mud and because of that cracking mud. Guess what, around these tank water holes, no mud. No drying mud, no cracked mud. These do not influence EHD. If they remove these, then you might as well remove every natural water hole out there in the woods, every puddle, um, every natural puddle, every man-made puddle, whatever it might be, every swamp, edge, that's what actually spreads disease in EHD and, and kills deer. These tanks don't. And CWD, come on guys. I mean, seriously, really? You have natural licking branches in the woods, mineral licks in the woods, puddles in the woods, ag fields, food sources, shrubs, apple trees. The deer are in nose to nose contact and close contact every single day. This water hole, this isn't an apple tree where they actually sit there for a half hour and eat apples nose to nose and, and fight over those apples and are there every single day to make sure that they are scooping up every little shred of apple. A water hole is like a 30 second stop or a 20 second stop. They just put their nose in the water and leave. They're not licking the outside of this rim right here. They're not touching nose to nose. They're taking a drink and leaving. About as harmless as it gets. You know what, the biologist should be able to figure that out. I don't even need to talk about it, but that shouldn't even be a question eight on a, on a form. This is way safer than any natural water hole out there. And I'm not even saying natural water holes are bad. I'm not saying these are bad. That's just a ridiculous question out of the other couple dozen uh, ridiculous questions around that survey that should even be put to the general public, um, let alone be up for discussion. Now let's throw water holes to the side for May. May is, uh, again, officially, I don't know where it's official, uh, maybe in our book, White Tail Water Hole Month, but White Tail Water Hole Month in May, it's a great time to install these. I love raking them out at the same time. Um, if you have old ones in early May, it's a great time to get the sticks and leaves and debris that are out of here. But also, this May is a great time. I, I plant the ultimate no-till system, but it's also a great time whether you're spraying for switchgrass that's already established in germination, germinating switchgrass that might be coming up more the end of May and June. It's that new switchgrass that you frost seeded or put into the ground in April, early May. Great time to hit those fields, hit your food plots. You're trying to control weeds when those weeds get eight to 12 inches high and put a spraying of one pint per acre of 2,4-D and two quarts per acre of glyphosate together. You can combine those and then spray. It's a great initial spraying for controlling your weeds on your food plots or within your switchgrass. Once the soil temperature hits 58 degrees for that switchgrass, it's gonna germinate. You can't push it. You can't spray right around that time. In fact, I wouldn't put the 2,4-D out you know, within a few days of that even on that switchgrass. Um, 2,4-D can injure and kill uh, switch grass. Just trust me on that one. <laughs> by my own, live by my mistakes, uh, learn by my mistakes type thing. But um, you really want to hit if your corn is popping the end of May typically, then to spray on May 10th or May 5th, great time to spray either switch grass or to really spray your food plots and get that first uh, spraying in to control your food plots for the year. And especially if you're going with the ultimate no till uh, food plot program that you can look up on either Instagram with a hashtag or on YouTube in a search for the ultimate no-till. And then finally, uh, turkey hunting and morel mushroom hunting, great time in May. I mean, that's, uh, we have some new land we'll be on in Minnesota this year and, and I'm gonna be calling for Diane, unfortunately for Diane, but we'll hopefully get a bird in and Dylan might bless us with his presence and his calling ability, that would be awesome. He's a, he's a great turkey caller, but um, we'll be hitting the turkeys. Great time to scout the woods at that time of year, especially new properties. Really looking for um, that buck sign, especially scrape sign that might have been from October, November. Um, you're not really looking for those pellet on pellet type trails because a lot of that's winter sign that's not gonna relate to your hunting season. So to really try to take a guess when you're looking at that deer sign, whether it's March, April, or May, 
was this sign made during the fall or was this leftover winter sign where there's pellets on pellets and deer were wintering in a certain conifer stand or whatever it is. Really try to differentiate the timing of the sign that you're seeing in May. And then finally, those awesome mushrooms that we find during May, the morels. Um, now, out on this property in particular, we had trespassers last year. We found where they were picked and those stinkers were. And I'm, I'm talking to you right now, if you're watching this video, those trespassers out there, we have an idea who they are. But if they're out there stealing our mushrooms this year, we have, we have extra cameras that we're putting out this year to capture you. And the landowner on this land wants to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. And we will enjoy doing so if we capture you. So there's a lot of fun activities in May, from catching trespassers, finding mushrooms, checking out some turkeys in the, in the leftover winter sign, trying to decipher if that was fall or winter sign, and certainly getting your water holes in and maintaining your water holes. May is an awesome month. I mean, it's fun because we're getting into some beautiful weather. We'll get rid of this stinking snow up on the hill right here. And there's a lot you can do in May, but there's also a lot you can do in June, July, August, September, October, and every month of the year. And we're gonna bring those months to you and what you should be focusing on each month in 2020, let alone 2021 and beyond.